Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Auto. So this is a video on the Tesla Model S. Uh, this is a 2014 uh, 85 kilowatt hour rear wheel drive and uh, this one's actually done 95,000 miles. So I'm running this one myself for a while and this is one of the first videos I'm going to make just looking at what these are like if you're going to buy an old one with um, similar sort of mileage. There's a few of these around now with over 100,000 miles and these are getting cheap. You can buy these now for 22 to 24,000 pounds, something like that. And uh, just look at uh, the common issues with them, what this one is like in particular, and whether it's worth buying one of these for a long range EV, or whether you would want to spend a little bit more and get something newer like uh, a Kia e Nero. So this one is an 85, which means it's an 85 kilowatt hour battery pack. So for the money, nothing else comes close for range. Um, these are cheaper than the Nero, the Kona, um, and all other electric cars with bigger batteries, because of course all of those are much newer, whereas these are now seven years old. And this one is coming to the end of its warranty soon. These have an eight year warranty on the drivetrain, so that's effectively your electric motor, which in this case is a single motor at the back, and the battery pack, and these have an eight year and limited mileage warranty on those. The warranty on the car has long gone, um, but this one has still got one year and three months or so left on the warranty. And obviously because it's unlimited mileage, then uh, that's great for these high mileage cars because this car's done 94,000 miles already. And obviously therefore I don't have to worry about doing a few extra miles in this one. So this one is in the very rare metallic green. Uh, it's also got gray uh, wheels which have been painted grey because originally they were silver. I think it's a really nice colour combination and it's got the um, beige uh, leather interior. Um, so yeah, I think it's a nice combo. Uh, I actually bought this one privately. Uh, I was looking at many of them in the trade and um, I couldn't really find the model I wanted at the price I was willing to pay. Um, so I bought this one privately and I think these are the best buy because a dual motor version they're just very expensive still making good money um, so I was quite happy with the performance of just a rear wheel drive one um, and it's still insane uh, but anyway yeah uh, rear wheel drive I think but the larger battery pack is the right model to buy so you can get 60s 70s 75s and 80s 85s and the 85 is the largest size pack at this sort of year so uh, let's just jump in so we can see the mileage let's just press the brake pedal so it starts up and there's the mileage 95,144 miles so uh, Teslas uh, don't have uh, scheduled servicing and this car came with no paperwork. So um, I don't really know its history. So I approached Tesla and asked for the service history. And uh, they forwarded me just one receipt. And that was back in May 2016 at 17,300 miles. And it had a service. So as far as I know, this car has only ever had one service. It could have had others. Uh, but um, obviously at independent garages, not at Tesla, and uh, the receipts haven't been kept with the vehicle. And of course with these you don't get a service book, so um, it's not surprising because there's no record that would um, be retained in the vehicle. At that original service in 2016, it uh, had a service and it had a CP harness replacement. I'm assuming CP means charge port, um, and that was done under warranty. So. Uh, as far as I know, that's all that has been done with this vehicle. But I've now since checked it all out and been all over it. And uh, uh, so far, I'm very, very impressed. So there's only uh, two other things I know about the history of this car from the previous owner. Firstly, it's had the memory upgrade. Uh, Tesla are now doing a recall on these and they're changing the memory chip um, in the uh, computer because these had eight gig to start with at this year and what they're finding now on these older cars is they're running out of space because of all the um, log files that the car creates and eight gig uh, isn't enough and they're getting uh, black screens where it all crashes um, 
and apparently it happened to this car and the owner the previous owner uh got in it and it all had a black screen and it all crashed anyway this has been done it's now got the 64 gig um emmmc chip in it the only other thing i know about the car is the sunroof was replaced apparently because the glass had cracked and he had got the sunroof replaced um getting it ready for sale uh, and apparently that cost 650 quid to have a new sunroof fitted in this so the nice thing about teslas is they get the over the air updates so the cars improve over age so any other vehicle uh, when you're looking at a six or seven year old car it will look just as it did uh, when it came out the factory and if there's been later models since they will look start looking sort of old um, obviously the tesla was refreshed and this has got the um the original uh, nose cone on the front but um yeah the rest of the car looks great and uh since i've had this car actually in the first week it's had two over the air updates and it's added new features and functions and indeed the dash has changed since i've had it because they've um, cleared up the graphics and the fonts and things on the speedo um, so old cars like this improve and get better and look better then they make changes to the charging and the performance and the motor and if there's an improvement they roll it out to all the cars so this car looks nothing like it did when it was original the um, graphics uh, have completely changed on the screen i'll drop in a shot of what they did look like when they originally were launched but uh, i must admit those original graphics really do look dated now um, but uh, these older cars get updated and they look identical to the newest models so what's it like driving an old model s that's done hundred thousand miles or so well um it's quite surprising it it still feels new um i'm very very impressed i've had a few of these now high mileage teslas and they've all been the same they've been uh nothing but impressive um particularly bear in mind there was a lot of comments about the build quality of these early teslas and this is generation one model s um obviously this is the first car they had built i know they did the roadster but that was based on an elise but this car ground up all new um and uh, yeah there are lots of comments about the build quality um but time has um shown us that they've basically got it right uh the interior fit and finish i think is impressive uh there is absolutely no rattles in this and uh i'm driving on rural rough roads lots of potholes and indeed as you can see very rural here to get to the uh industrial unit at work it's down a farm track and that's pretty rough and um, yeah, uh, in all the Teslas I've had in, they've all been completely rattle free, which uh, a lot of new EVs aren't. And the seat in this is still very good as well. Um, obviously, this is leather and this is the Gen 1 seats, which are a little bit flatter, which personally I quite like. I find this seat very comfortable. I know there's a lot of comments that they weren't great, but I'm impressed with the seat and I've done a few long journeys now. But yeah, uh, being leather, you'd expect to have some sort of fine cracking. And that looks worse now because I've put some leather cleaner on it and it's highlighted all the cracks. It did look better. But yeah, as far as um, 100,000 mile car goes, that seat is still very, uh, looks very good. What I do like on these seats is the lumbar support. Um, and unlike other cars, it goes up and down as well. So you can adjust it out and in but you can also adjust the height of it so you can get it just at the right position. And uh, I don't know whether it's going to show on camera. It's probably a case that you have got to feel it more. There we are, it's coming out there. But yeah, very impressive. I find these very comfortable. The common issue on these earlier Teslas, well indeed all Model S's, is wear on this um, pillar here and you can see there the fabric is just starting to wear there and uh, that happens on all of them but considering the age of this this one is pretty good but what causes that is on these teslas you have multiple seat positions and you have an easy entry position so when you turn the car off and open the door by default uh, the settings that it seems that all drivers have is the seat moves all the way back steering wheel out the way and gives you loads of room to get in and out consequently because the seat goes back you end up rubbing on the pillar here 
So what I've done is change that easy uh, entry position and I actually have the seat very far forward and upright and quite high so you don't fall into the vehicle. And I'm hoping that's going to stop me wearing this uh, fabric out anymore on the pillar. The interior of this car is really clean and tidy, no um, rips at all to the seat, no scuffing at all on any of the trim um, and as I said absolutely no rattles. Even the uh, rubbers here on the door uh, are completely um, tear free and no wear. Uh, which is quite surprising because the sills are quite deep on this and your foot does tend to rub over the scuff plate here. Um, and indeed I've seen these loose and broken on Teslas because they do take quite a bit of wear. But in this case oh, it's all looking really good. Um, I've, I've seen these with split um, door rubbers here, ceiling rubbers, but yeah not so in this case. No wear on that at all um, and indeed also on the door there's no scuff marks your foot often sort of hits this but yeah as you can tell it's um, a really good example also the steering wheel um, absolutely no wear at all on the leather uh, I've also got a Hyundai Ioniq that's done 80,000 miles and on that uh, it's got a leather steering wheel as well and uh, you there is some sort of wear on the leather um, I do wonder whether it's some someone with particularly sweaty hands because they're sort of it's more staining than wear but it won't clean off um, but yeah the steering wheel on this is absolutely immaculate even the stitching hasn't worn um, yeah again you just really wouldn't know it's done the mileage other place you often would get wear is on the armrest here um, particularly on this corner because your arm is resting like that but again absolutely nowhere whatsoever um, obviously this car's got the sunroof the older ones uh, did have the option of a, an opening sunroof uh, Tesla have done away with that because sunroofs are a pain uh, they always do leak uh, when all the seals age um, but the, obviously the newer cars that have a fixed uh, full-size panoramic roof this one has got the panoramic roof but it's also got the opening sunroof so this section will lift up and slide over this section the only job I've had to do is um, sort of a little minor repair on this rubber seal here um, the seal is just starting to wear there but um, it, the seal is actually not sealing anything uh, because this is a track that this sunroof will slide in uh, I think it's just protecting the edge of the glass um, and it had come unstuck and it was uh, sitting down in the gully so all I've done is run a bit of clear silicon along that and stuck it back up to this piece of glass and that's just going to stop it getting snagged or torn when the sunroof opens it's not actually providing any waterproof sealing because it is a channel at the end of the day and as with all sunroofs there is a rain channel and in each corner there is a hole here which uh, has a tube running down in the A-pillar here and it drains the water into the uh, wheel arch and I did notice when I opened the roof there was sitting water in here so I've attempted to clear the um, drain tubes uh, but I'm not, I haven't tested it yet whether I've actually done it I've run a, a hoover in it I've run an airline pushing air down I've tried to get a plastic cord down inside to um, poke it through to make sure it's clear but it's actually a very difficult job to do there seems to be too many angles in it where you can't actually get anything down um, so yeah that's all I've done and time will tell whether that is actually um, uh, running free uh, so yeah I probably won't use the sunroof too much to be honest I'm not really that bothered with a sunroof um, I would just quickly say the some versions with sunroofs are the only cars that have um, roof bar attachments there so if you want to put roof bars on your car on a, a Model S it has to be one with an opening sunroof yeah time will tell whether this will leak at the moment it doesn't as you can see uh, we've just had a bit of rain um, and there is no leaking at all but if I get inside the back here and look up at the roof lining here we can see we've got a bit of water staining here so at some point in its history clearly there has been uh, a water leaking let me just turn the radio off so yeah the rest of it's fine there's a few grubby fingerprints on the top half but if we look around at this side there's no water staining at all it's just on that other corner so yeah I'm assuming that's just because of uh, blocked um, drainage channels and that's something that affects all cars with sunroofs the Model S has obviously got these frameless 
um, doors and uh, with all cars when you've got frameless doors as the vehicle ages the seals no longer provide adequate water sealing but not so in this case it all works perfectly fine as you can see the only slight issue is that rubber seal isn't sticking down on the last couple of inches but I've had a go to see if I can hook that out but it's just been compressed too many times but absolutely not a problem it's still providing the proper sealing and all the others are absolutely fine and yeah they all still are fully waterproof. Uh, moisture in the lights in the rear light assemblies is a common problem on Teslas these are generally fine there's a tiny bit at certain times but yeah they generally seem fine uh, there is some damp in there because there's a little bit of mold in the seam uh, I suspect they all do that at this sort of age but there's no water as such inside the lens apart from these two lights here which I guess are reversing lights there's some condensation and a bit of mold in those so I'll have a look at those at some point but generally these are much better than many others I've seen. I'll just quickly talk about keys very minor thing but the uh, Tesla Model S keys look like that and the uh, spare key here clearly never been used never had any wear the key that has been used was uh, had some wear and uh, had sellotape holding it together um, so quite simply I just bought one of these silicon um, covers and uh, I'm not going to take it out because it's quite tight in there uh, but yeah one, one key had started wearing um, but silicon cover completely solves that the key's completely functional it's quite nice now because I can see where the buttons are um, and uh, yeah clearly if that had been put on a long time ago then the key wouldn't have worn but anyway that's going to protect the key now for many years to come and keep that uh, fob functional so I've uh, been around this car and checked it all out so the first thing I found was the cabin filter it still had an original Tesla filter so obviously the only surface this has had at Tesla is that one in 2016 which would make this filter five years old I'm not sure whether it's that old it didn't look that old obviously they're black from new because it's a charcoal one anyway uh, and I have since hoovered it out and put it back in um, so I don't think if this was serviced at a third party uh, garage that they would buy in a genuine filter not for just a cabin filter um, so maybe this is a five-year-old filter but anyway I've replaced it now with a Bosch filter that was only 20 pounds this car also had a slight rattle from the front suspension uh, which isn't surprising you'd expect that at 100,000 miles but uh, it wasn't um, when you were going over bumps it was just uh, as you were driving along a reasonably flat road you sort of felt this constant rattle from the front at low speed so I decided it was probably the drop links so I've just replaced the uh, the pair of drop links and what the drop links are um, is they go on the end of the anti-roll bar or the sway bar if you're in America and uh, attached to the um, shock absorber and um, it's the first thing you generally would replace if you had any suspension knocking and they're very easily to very easy to replace so the one on the um, near side all seemed fine these are still very stiff and um, can't feel any play in them at all but this one on the driver's side uh, the top one was loose and indeed the uh, gator has split underneath there um, can't feel any play as such but um, yeah as you can see I can move it very easily with my thumb there whereas the bottom joint still very stiff actually I was struggling to move that so yes it was only the one um, worn joint yet yeah, that changing the pair has completely transformed the ride it is now utterly smooth no knocking whatsoever and really has transformed the way the car feels it just feels so tight and smooth and quiet now um, I'm quite shocked that just one drop link knuckle uh, can have that much of effect it, the what little play there is in this really does get magnified over the anti-roll bar so um, these only cost uh, 23 pounds each so uh, 40 50 pounds um, 
job and uh, completely transformed the car. So looking around the rest of it, everything else looks original and I suspect these were original um, as well. So yeah, it's likely that that is the first repair on this car. I've also had a look at the brakes. Um, Tesla Model S brakes are prone to uh, corrosion um, and just like all EVs they don't get used much because the regen braking is quite strong. Um, but yeah, all very good, no corrosion. The pads are getting a little bit uh, worn but I think they're probably original. Um, they are knee changing at the front fairly soon. I don't know whether you can see in there. Um, no, I think it's too dark. But they are, what's that, four millimetres? And I think they're 15 millimetres from new. So if they are original, that's done 94,000 miles. They've still got another 20,000 miles or so left. But I'm going to do a brake surface on this. Um, but all the pins and the spring clips at the back um, all look really good. No corrosion. Um, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's all original still. Uh, one of our previous cars was a BMW i3 and that had done 120,000 miles, maybe 125,000 miles, I can't remember now. And uh, that was still on its original brake pads as well. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if these are original still. So with no other evidence of servicing apart from that one Tesla service at 17,000 miles, um, it just goes to show that these cars do last and are very cheap to run. So it's likely it's still on original brakes. It's very likely it's still on original suspension components. I would just add, this has got the um, coil spring suspension rather than the air suspension. So it's quite likely this has had its first repair with just those drop links changing. Um, so yeah, it just goes to show these really do last and um, can be very cheap to run. One other thing to talk about is door handles prone to failure on the Tesla Model S because they're overcomplicated. Um, they've got electric motors retracting and um, pushing them out of course. They've also got to touch sensitive motion. Um, so yeah quite common to fail on the Model S. I've got no evidence these have been replaced but I'm sure they have been. Um, but they all fully work on this car as you can see. Um, and so does the touch function, which a lot of uh, these cars I've had in, that bit doesn't work. So if I touch the handle, as you can see, it, they come out and that works on all doors. They also have a light underneath, which lights up um, when they stick out. Uh, and that's on all three doors, apart from this one. It has failed on this rear door, but I'm not worried about that. And I'm not going to go to the effort of taking it apart to fix that. So next, let's talk about LEDs. So LED daytime running lights, all perfectly working without any fault on uh, this car. Uh, it's a common problem on the facelift model. They do have sections of LEDs which fail and you have to change the whole headlight. It wasn't really an issue on the um, original Model S's and uh, luckily not an issue here either. They're all working. And the backlights are all good as well. All the LEDs, all the little individual LEDs are all working fine in the backlights. Uh, all except the high level brake light that goes the full length of the vehicle. That's got multiple LEDs in it and a few of those have failed. Uh, five in total aren't working, but it doesn't distract from the function of the light. But that's something I might look at to see whether that is repairable. So next, let's talk about the battery, because that's what everyone's concerned about when uh, looking at second-hand electric vehicles. So um, on this car, obviously, it's got the 85 uh, kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, I've only been driving this car for two weeks, but uh, and I haven't generally charged it to 100%. Um, even when I was doing a long trip, I didn't really need to uh, because I was planning on using a supercharger en route anyway. Um, but yeah, I f I'm finding that um, I'm certainly getting well over 200 miles. It looks like it does probably about 230 miles to a full charge, which is about what you would expect. And it's about the same as what they were doing when they're new. Um, I've had many uh, high mileage EVs and um, yeah, in reality, battery degradation just really isn't a thing on an electric vehicle if it's not a Nissan. 
Um, so yeah, batteries are very good in Teslas. And of course, uh, Tesla being um, introduced over the air, over the air updates to restrict charging um, and any changes they can make to prolong the life of the battery. So really, you don't have to worry about battery life. Um, and I'm still driving this car quite fast and enjoying it because it's new. Um, so I'm sure I can get over 250 miles if I just drove it um, a bit more uh, gently. Another little issue which I'm just going to monitor for now is motor whine. This does have a bit of motor whine uh, at low speeds when you're accelerating. Obviously this is the single motor version so you've got a motor at the back here driving the back wheels. Um, it's not bad and it really isn't of any real concern at the moment but I'm just going to monitor it. I have heard Tesla uh, have changed motors of rear wheel drive versions because of that and they do that under warranty. So the warranty on this car is uh, is another one year and three months left. So over the next year if I've still got this I'm going to monitor that and get it into Tesla if I think it's getting too bad. Wow uh, the rain just came down so uh, I just got wet there. Anyway um, the only other thing which uh, is quite good timing actually, I was going to talk about wiper blades, or not wiper blades, wipers generally. Uh, I have to change a wiper blade, so that's the only other uh, thing that I've changed on this car, but you know, that, that's normal wear and tear things anyway. But it's the, um, the wiper uh, sensitivity, it's pretty bad in the Teslas, and I had read that this was an issue, um, but when you adjust it, that's... Um, low sensitivity and then they're doing an automatic wipe like all modern cars they're, they're measuring it's measuring the water on the screen and adjusting the uh, wipe sequence depending on how much rain there is but i tend to find it's got a mind of its own um, let's just see whether it's going to do that now um, it will, for no reason it will suddenly go to high speed for about five or six seconds even when there's no water on the well not much water on the glass um, and then slow down again it just is really erratic i thought tesla would fix that with software updates but um that's one thing i noticed getting in this car um, and we've obviously got our um, sort of April showers now in the UK, uh, even though it's a month late this year and it's in May, but we're getting quite a bit of rain now. And every time I'm driving in the rain, I just find the wipers are annoying. I'm forever correcting um, the wipers because they, it just doesn't seem to be getting the automatic sensing correct. But of course, I've got a camera pointing at them, so they're behaving exactly as you would want and working perfectly normal. But I bet as soon as I turn this camera off, they'll suddenly go on to high speed. So yeah, I think that's about it. The only other thing I'll just quickly mention is I've had the CCS upgrade fitted. So uh, this is the adapter that plugs into the charge ports, the Type 2 connector at the back, and then it allows you to charge the vehicle on a CCS DC rapid charger which the CCS is these two pins here. Um, that was only a, a £233 job from Tesla, plus VAT, so I think it's 281 I think. Um, so yeah, very cheap for what it was. Um, they, the Ranger came out in his uh, Model S, came up from London, uh, took him about an hour to do. They uh, ripped the back seat up and uh, fit a new ECU on the charger, uh, and then you get this uh, adapter. Um, as well which um, the reason for this is it's going to allow me to charge the car on public CCS rapid chargers and not then therefore reliant on the Tesla supercharger network uh, it just gives you that bit of extra, extra flexibility um, traditionally Tesla owners would buy the Chadimo adapter cable which allows them to use other people's chargers they're very big and bulky and of course Chadimo is an old um, connector now and all the new stuff going in is um, CCS uh, and indeed the very latest um, superchargers uh, are CCS only um, because that's what the Model 3 uses so really this is a must now for Model S owners is to get this um, conversion fitted to this uh, CCS retrofit um, and for the price uh, 280 quid well worth doing. So yeah, I think that's it for now. I'll wrap this video up because there's uh, nothing else I can do outside because it's raining too hard now. But yeah, overall, I'm um, very impressed again with the Model S. Um, 
very little has been needed to um, be done on this one it drives an absolute dream especially now the drop links have been done it feels fantastic uh, I'm just going to monitor that uh, motor wine but I really don't think that it's uh, bad enough that Tesla will entertain changing just yet but anyway I'll monitor that over the next year um, but yeah I really do think the uh, quality um, of these cars as they age um, this is completely rattle free inside and out uh, absolutely everything works without any fault um, everything seems original still as well uh, so yeah for a gen 1 car at nearly 100,000 miles I am very impressed with it and I think if you're looking for a, uh, a high range a sort of a long range electric vehicle then I would consider one of these um, especially as these are now cheaper with a few miles on these are now cheaper than uh, anything else in the market really so as always if you've liked this video please do click the thumbs up that really does help other people um, see the channel it helps with the uh, YouTube algorithms and um, do subscribe if you haven't already and more EV videos coming soon